Jones had eight points in that third quarter as well. We've got ourselves a three-point basketball game. The 12th and 13th seeds here in the Big Ten Tournament. Both of them have had various adversity through the season. But when March hits, it's a clean slate. Mott steps into it there. Janae Terry quickly the other way. Jones picks up where she left off. Pina went down slowly on that play, so that's why it gets called a block. Jones has done a great job staying in attack mode this entire game. She comes down full speed ahead and goes into Pina expecting to make the shot, not expecting to get the foul called. Jones now has 13 points. She's been a huge spark off the bench. One of two freshmen on this team that it made the Big Ten All-Freshman team. Of course, Mary Ashley Stevenson, who was freshman of the year, voted on by the media, and then Rashonda Jones on an All-Freshman team as well. Pina. Had plenty of time, missed everything on that one. And that's the shot that they want Maggie Pina to take. I know they didn't go in, but still, she's known as a knockdown shooter, especially when she's wide open. She normally gets her feet set. Layden! Smooth! Layden didn't even get a shot in the third quarter. It still comes out ready to shoot, staying hot, firing when her team needs her. She averages over 40% from the three-point line. Over 60% of her shots are from the outside. That's a big one. 9-0 run by the Boilermakers. They're back up. Walsh, been big all evening. Madison Layden with such a timely three as well. From a momentum standpoint, she gets her feet set, shoulders squared. But she has such a deep range. I mean, look, that is well behind the three-point line. And her ability to spread the floor just gives Purdue more room to operate offensively. you got to watch out. Elena Harper, number 32, has four fouls. And that's impactful because Purdue is down a post player. Who else is going to be able to guard Walsh if Harper has to go out? That's when you have to maybe put Sophie Swanson back in. She's got some size and physicality. Purdue up two. They were down by three just two minutes ago coming in to this fourth quarter. Layden again. Second chance opportunity as Terry gets her 14th rebound. Ellis is fouled. Purdue playing with so much more energy and passion right now. And it started defensively, keeping Northwestern to one and done. They've been able to score off those turnovers they forced. And right now, they're in a nice momentum position. And they're playing a lot faster. This pace and tempo right now favors Purdue. We always talk about basketball being a game of runs, but it's a game of momentum swings as well. And, and how do you respond to those? And how do you get momentum back? How do you keep momentum? Ellis now has 16. Ellis has been on a roll lately. She comes into this game averaging 20 points in the last five. 17 tonight. She has completely put this Purdue team on her back and gotten them on this run and in this position with the lead. They were down by double digits not too long ago, and now all of a sudden they find themselves in a favorable position. Down by 12 in the third quarter. The Boilermakers up by four now. How does Northwestern respond? Deflected by Terry, picked up by Ellis. We talked about pace. Purdue wants to push it a little bit more than Northwestern does. Mary Ashley Stevenson gets position. Two free throws, just missed. Good recognition by Purdue. Caroline Lau, smaller than Mary Ashley Stevenson, so she has that advantage down in the paint. Purdue got her the ball perfectly, timed it out well. And Lau right there just... Gets all in uh, Stevenson for the foul. Well, and that's Lau's fourth foul. So now if you're Purdue, you got to attack Caroline Lau. Try to get her out of the game. 
And she's a big part of the Northwestern offense, specifically facilitating, getting things organized. Stevenson misses the first, gets the second. Twelve to one run for the Boilermakers. And the Boilers have done a great job scoring quickly in transition. They've been able to force turnovers, score off them. They put Northwestern in a little bit of a slump now. Purdue in a press. Northwestern breaks it. Up by 12 at one point. Now the Wildcats find themselves down by five. Been a great basketball game so far. Both of these squads talking about the fact they have nothing to lose. Challenging regular seasons doesn't mean you can't come alive in the postseason. This is fun. This is the time to come alive. And you get a little extra juice when you come into the Big Ten tournament. And you know, there's still that outside glimmering chance that, hey, if we do somehow make this crazy run, maybe we get into the tournament. If we win the whole thing, we do. Daily off the curl. Picked up by Layden. Oh, and this is a Purdue team that made it to the NCAA tournament a season ago. Northwestern was last in the NCAA tournament in 2021. Just under seven minutes to go. How can Northwestern find some offense? They gotta get it back inside and try to play inside, outside, finding easy buckets. They're moving it around. Janae Terry has had back-to-back -back huge rebounds for the Boilers. She's got 16 rebounds. I mean, just phenomenal what Janae Terry is able to do night in and night out. That's Kaylee Walsh's second personal foul. Next time Northwestern fouls, Purdue will be shooting free throws. They get it into Ellis. Stevenson has it over her head, was in duress. Taken away by the Wildcats. Weaver. You think Maggie Pina passed up a shot on that one? Yeah, she's got to shoot that with some confidence. She's, as a shooter, you got to forget your misses. You only remember the makes. See, Purdue is in no rush. They've got the lead. Trying to keep it. Ellis rejecting the screen, going up against Weaver, wins that battle. See the passion by Abby Ellis this evening. Abby Ellis is the reason why Purdue has this lead. She came out and knocked on huge shots in the third quarter. She's making the right decisions defensively. Then she's being aggressive, getting to the basket and pulling it out, knocking down shots. Leading Purdue right now with 19 points, Abby Ellis. And Northwestern's offense has just gone cold here in this fourth quarter. Down by seven. Shot clock winding down. Daly has to put it up. Joe McEwen says time and time again, Mel Daly makes hard shots. And this is where Northwestern desperately needs to get a stop. Keep Purdue to one and done here. And the Boilers, I like how they're slowing it down, running through their offense. They have the advantage right now. Under five to go. Might as well put it all out there. Laid in. And another offensive rebound by Purdue. Purdue trying to hold on. Meantime, Northwestern trying to make one more run.
the author of Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers comes the new Peacock original, Apples Never Fall, Annette Bening, Sam Neill, Jake Lacey, and Allison Brie star in the new original series, which explores marriage, sibling bonds, and one family's darkest secrets. Apples Never Fall is streaming March 14th only on Peacock. Back and forth we go here from the Target Center in Minneapolis. Purdue was up by seven, then Northwestern up by 12. Now Purdue has the advantage, 437 to go in the fourth. Credit how Purdue has been able to get the pace of play back in their favor by forcing Northwestern to take bad shots. They've been able to keep the Cats to one and none, and they have scored quickly in transition. And they've gotten to the foul line a ton in this quarter. So many different things that have started defensively have played into favor offensively for the Boilers. They've been led offensively by Abby Ellis and Rashonda Jones. Jones has 11 points in the second half. Ellis has 12. The lead back to seven. Purdue matching its largest lead of the evening. Wildcats looking for some execution after that timeout. Skip pass to Weaver. Lau had space. She pitches it to Pina. See Pina thinking about it. Lau is open too. It. Comes Walsh. Stays right here with Northwestern. Purdue's done a great job really clogging up the paint in this fourth quarter. Kaylee Walsh has had zero room to move whatsoever. There's like three white jerseys down there, and they're doing a great job keeping her at bay. We're well, seeing some hesitation, too, from Northwestern shooters. We're talking about Caroline Lau and Maggie Pina. Can't worry about the misses. You got to only remember the makes as a shooter. Short term memory. You got to be like Dory in Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming, just keep shooting. All the time. What's the saying? Miss 100% of the shots you don't take? Cliche, yes, but true. Here comes Northwestern. Another opportunity. They keep getting it down to Walsh. Opposite side and one opportunity. Nice spark by the Wildcats. That time Walsh doing a good job getting her shoulder into the defense as she was able to turn back square up to have a chance to make the shot and make it an and one situation. There's the double. She spins away from the double. Textbook down low. The free throws is an area that Kaylee Walsh has really improved at. 76% last year, 86% this year. She gets the three point play to go. It is a four point basketball game with under four minutes here. This has been wild. It's tournament basketball time, ladies and gentlemen. If this is any indication of how this tournament is going to go, we are in for a treat this weekend. The coaches across the league have talked about how competitive this league has been night in and night out, the parity from top to bottom. Look at a team like Nebraska, who lost to Rutgers, who's last in the standings, then turn around and beat Iowa, who's at the top of the standings. Any given day, anyone can win. The game is not played on paper, people. I like, like that. Right here on the hardwood. Jones trying to go up against Walsh. Gets the bucket. That's big time. Rashonda Jones has been the X factor for the Boilers in this game. Coming off the bench, doing all of the little things, but she has hit baskets at huge times for Purdue. This is a big and one opportunity. Kaylee Walsh comes down, fouls right there, gets her on the arm, but Jones has been so aggressive attacking the basket every single time she gets the ball, and it's been a major payoff for the Boilers. Jones now has back-to-back -back games of 16 points, has 16 points on Sunday. 16 points so far this evening. Lau going quick. Travel there by Goodchild. Seven point lead for Purdue. Big possession here if you're Northwestern. They have to keep Purdue to one and done. Not allow the Boilers to get a chance down low for another in one situation. And you've noticed Purdue slowing it up, getting deep into its offensive set. Ex 
extension of the defense here by Northwestern. Added pressure, Ellis open and gets her own rebound. What happened on that I play? I don't even <laughs> know what just happened. The time is winding down. Jones just keeps coming. Talk about a signature performance for the freshman. Rashonda Jones in the fourth quarter has been money for Purdue. She is getting to the basket at will, and nobody in Northwestern can stay in front of her. The freshman not playing like a freshman at all. This is a veteran play for Purdue. Purdue up by nine. That young lady right there, number two, Rashunda Jones. 16 of her 18 points have come here in the second half. She has been absolute money for Purdue because she's gotten downhill and nobody in the Northwestern Jersey can keep her in front of them. Still time to work here. 2.20 to go. Over and back. So turnover Northwestern, not what you needed. These turnovers are coming at such untimely times for the Cats. Credit the way Purdue's been able to get into passing lanes and cut down angles. Northwestern's now playing too fast. They have completely dominated pace of play. The Boilers have in this half. Kudos to how Purdue just turned this entire thing around. And we saw that it was all ignited by head coach Katie Gerald just getting into her players. And, and it shows the respect that they have for her. When your coach can hold you accountable and you respond. I need Katie Gerald to give me a couple of pump-up speeches on the days where I don't feel like going to work out or something. Yeah, I need she needs her to talk to us before we to go to class. Us. Yes, I need her. <laughs> need the pump-up. Maybe we'd run faster. Dowler. Two minutes to go. Daly goes for the steal. Purdue holds on to it. Shot clock winding down. I don't know if Jones realizes it. She does, gets it up. Still a nine-point basketball game. Northwestern's got to try to score fast. In that last huddle, they were saying, shoot the ball. Lau just turned it over there. Got caught up in her own dribble. Northwestern forced to play the foul game now. Janae Terry has two free throws. Hey, this is Janae Terry's stat line. All right, yeah, seven points, six assists, 16 rebounds. Is this a video game? That's a video game number. And look, Purdue has absolutely dominated on the glass tonight in this game. And it's made a huge difference. The second chance opportunities, the points off turnovers. How about 20 offensive rebounds? Are you kidding me? It's hard to lose games when you are creating so many possessions for yourself. The effort in this basketball game from the Boilermakers has been clear. And, you know, you, you talk about the X factor being Rashonda Jones. You can also say just staying with it for Purdue has helped a ton. Well, and they've completely shut down Kaylee Walsh in this fourth quarter. Wow, trying to make something happen. What? Count it. She'll go to the free throw line. Northwestern not done yet. Caroline Lau trying to get an advantage, going to the rim, absorbs that contact. That's why you always want to continue going for the shot. And she's lucky there because there was a little extension of the arm there from Caroline Lau. That could have been easily called a charge. So that foul is on Ellis. She has four. Lau will get one free throw. Seven point game, 113 to go. Northwestern was previously fouling. Looks like they tried to do it again. Not yet. They need to. That foul was unintentional. So Purdue back to the free throw line. Jones 
Evans is three for three so far in what has been just a standout performance. 18 points, seven of 13 shooting for the freshman. And she's been the quickest player on the floor. Literally no one can stand, stay in front of her. You know, the Timberwolves play here at the Target Center. I don't know. She'd probably blow by some of those guys as well right now with her quickness. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past her. They call her Spider. Because of the versatility that she has. Northwestern has to go quickly. Pina trying to create some space. That's short. Daly on the back side. 53 seconds to go. Six-point game. Northwestern clearly going for the steal, but time is winding down. I'm going to try to foul here. There it is. But Lau, she had four. That's where you have to be so, aware on your team. So she's fouled out. Foul trouble. She knew it immediately. Walks to the bench. 40.1 to go. Six-point basketball game. Hey, with the three-point line and how quickly you can get points up, this game's not over yet. Northwestern just has to be aware of time and score. They got to score quickly. And that's why you have a lot of good child in the game to try to get an open three opportunity. Maggie Pina has to be aggressive. But you can't turn it over. Lead back to seven. Point lead. Yeah. Timeout by Joe McEwen and the Wildcats. Because they have all the series if you want to watch that. There's but a no, filter. There's in a all filter. seriousness, this is the best week of college basketball. It's fun. It's like the lead up to the NCAA tournament. The Big Ten Conference has been so competitive over the last couple of years. I mean, every single session of the Big Ten Women's Tournament is sold out. It is unprecedented. It's fun. And there's a lot of talent. Nice bucket there by Mott. Quick one two for Northwestern. It was a great execution. Sideline out of bounds. ATOs. You got to get the ball inside and score as quick as possible. So, not a ton of time came off, about three seconds or so. And Northwestern has an opportunity here. They're giving themselves a chance. Really important, though, when you score quick, you got to try to get a high percentage shot, either to a confident shooter or get it down low. And right there, Walsh does a great job extending the play. Mott's got deep positioning, and Purdue doesn't want to foul them. So really nice job by Northwestern attacking and being aggressive at the rim. Now in women's basketball, once you call a timeout, you can advance the ball to your sideline. Now Purdue's going to have a chance to do the same exact thing. Run a sideline out of bounds play. Six-point game, 37.1 to go. You'd imagine Northwestern would have to foul quickly to extend the life of this one. Terry taking it out. They don't foul right away. Trying to create a turnover. Possession goes back to the Boilermakers. Thirty-one point eight left. And you see the substitution. Mercia De Musayo will guard the impounder. You see the length and size she has. Terry inbounding once again. And whose basketball is it? Referees will have to take a
three-point play. Just as much of a big defensive play for Purdue as it is offense for Northwestern. Pina coming off double screens. She's going all the way to the cup. Draws the foul. Clock is stopped and you get an opportunity to shoot two. Pina is a transfer from Boston University. It's her first year at Northwestern, graduate student. She's a sharp shooter. She actually played for, here's a fun fact, Marissa Mosley, the head coach of Wisconsin. Maggie Pina played for at Boston U. So a little Big Ten connection there. Get some both. Four point game. 23.6 to go. I mean, this was an eight point basketball game around 10 seconds ago. That's why I love the advance the ball rule because it gives you a chance. It allows coaches to show their chops and what they've got strategically, and it allows players to make massive game changing plays. Northwestern here needs to try to switch everything, not allow for you to easily inbound it. And the Boilers just need to attack, get the ball in, wait to get fouled. They have the advantage right now. They simply have to get it in and be under control, not rushing it. Purdue was up by 10 with 1.30 to go. Now it's a four point game right now. Previously, Northwestern has opted to try to get a turnover, steal deflection, and then foul. We'll see what they do here. Carter, not fouling right away. Time winding down, and there it is. So we've got a good one right now. Four point basketball game, 18.5 to go, but you've got to stick around. All I'm seeing in the crowd right now is Minnesota fans. That's because the hometown team, the Gophers, taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights right after this game ends. I see a lot of gold right now. This is so fun. Minnesota, Minneapolis is a great basketball city. The Minnesota Lynx, who have won four WNBA championships, are here. They're known for their attendance, their love for the Lynx. It's a good time. Ellis gets both of those clutch free throws back to a six point game. Northwestern once again needs to get it in inside. Whether it be to Keely Walsh, whoever, you got to score quick though. Time's not on Northwestern side. Did some offense defense substitutions. So Walsh has been out on defense, back in on offense. Remember, Caroline Lau is fouled out. Your point guard, who usually sets things up for you. Joe McEwen now having to go deep into his playbook. First game of the Big Ten tournament. It's not disappointing by any means. At all. I'm saying it's just setting the tone for what's to come the rest of the week. I know a lot of people are... Waiting to see some of those ranked teams in the Big Ten. They don't play till Friday. Got to score quick. Walsh has to put it up. She's fading away. They foul Abby Ellis. 11.8 is on the clock. Not how you wanted that possession to go if you're a Wildcat fan. A credit Purdue in this game. The way they came back down 12 in the third quarter. Abby Ellis absolutely put this team on her back. Had a lot of help from Rashunda Jones right there on the high five, who was the quickest player in the gym by far. Got to the rim. Ellis was able to establish herself in the three-point line, then work her way in. This has been a team effort for the Boilers. Ellis now leads all scorers with 25. Got a double double too, Abby Ellis. One point five to go. Walsh is fouled on that attempt. You can't deny what Kaylee Walsh did in this basketball game, especially early. Established herself in the post, hit a couple threes from the outside, but credit to Purdue as well. They responded and adjusted. But well, the Boilers adjusted by clogging the paint completely. Kaylee Walsh had nowhere to move or go in the second half. Walsh now at 25. Great performances today by K. 
Kaylee Walsh and Melanie Daly both scoring over 20, but it's Purdue who will live to see another day. They play on the Boilermakers. Abby Ellis. And